Hello everyone and welcome back to Obscure History and today we are doing Kelly Johnson, the man who not only helped develop the P-38, U-2, and SR-71, but holds the record for the first fighter to exceed 400 miles per hour, the first operational jet fighter for the United States, first fighter capable of Mach 2, and the first aircraft capable of exceeding Mach 3. This man's innovative mind helped change the aeronautical industry, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about Kelly Johnson. Now, Johnson is actually the son of Swedish immigrants and was born in Michigan and raised in Michigan. In terms of education, he went to Flint Central High School. From there, he went to Flint Junior College, then Mott Community College, and eventually ended up at the University of Michigan. And while at the University of Michigan, he got both a bachelor's and master's degree in aeronautical engineering. And his journey into advancing aircraft actually starts at the University of Michigan. While at the University of Michigan, he actually ran wind tunnel tests. One in particular was for Lockheed's proposed Model 10 airliner. And he actually felt like this aircraft actually had a lot of problems, but his professors ignored him and told Lockheed that the plane was perfectly fine and there was nothing wrong with it. After he graduated, he actually went to work for Lockheed. And while he worked for Lockheed, he actually ended up talking with Hal Hibbard, the chief engineer at Lockheed, and told him that the Model 10 was unstable under wind testing. And Lockheed actually paid for him to go back to the University of Michigan and redo all his testing. Now, they took his advice, made modifications, and the aircraft became the Lockheed Model 10 Electra, which is an extremely successful production aircraft for Lockheed with over 149 produced. But more importantly, this cemented Kelly Johnson as an aeronautical engineer for Lockheed, and they started giving him more tasks. And he had done so well, by 1938, they made him chief research engineer. Now, it's around this time he starts working for Lockheed's Advanced Development Projects, which was designed to develop the next and future aircraft. A few years later, this project will become known as the Skunk Works. And if you know anything about the Skunk Works, they're the ones that create all the cool stuff. But the first thing they produced was the P-38 Lightning, which would become the first fighter aircraft to exceed 400 miles per hour and have over 10,000 aircraft produced. Now, the next aircraft he developed came as a result of the German development of jet fighter craft which is the P-80 Shooting Star. This aircraft was actually built in six months after its initial conception, which is incredibly fast in the aeronautical industry, and became the United States' first production jet fighter. And while he was working on the P-38 and the P-80, he actually helped develop the Lockheed Constellation, which was not only Lockheed's first four-engine aircraft, but would become the first pressurized cabin aircraft, something that all modern-day passenger aircraft have. Now, after World War II in 1955, he was contacted by the newly commissioned Central Intelligence Agency to help them develop a new air base for the development of classified aircraft. This was at Groom Lake, Nevada, unofficially known as Area 51. So, basically, Area 51 was helped created by the man who would create the P-38, U-2, and SR-71. And, of course, the first aircraft he developed there was the U-2 Dragon Lady. And for those of you who don't know what the U-2 is, it is a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. It can exceed 70,000 feet and be used to gather all kinds of intelligence information from taking photos of the ground to gathering weather information, which it's still used by NASA to do this day, 68 years later. Now, the next project he had his hands on was the Lockheed X-7, and this was basically a big, giant ramjet with wings, and this was a test bed to develop ramjet technology which was developed into the AQM-60 Kingfisher. And the Kingfisher is extremely important for two reasons. One, it could travel at the incredible speed of Mach 4.3. That's more than four times the speed of sound. But additionally, the designs would go into this, the Lockheed A-12. The engines actually came from the Kingfisher. All the development from the X-7 and the Kingfisher went into the A-12. And some of you may be thinking, no, 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 this is the SR-71. Actually, this is the predecessor to the SR-71. This is the CIA-funded and developed A-12. Now, the A-12 did develop into the YF-12, which was supposed to be an interceptor aircraft, but only three were developed, and it never really went into service. However, an improved version of these aircraft was developed into the SR-71 Blackbird. That is world-renowned. And this was the top reconnaissance aircraft of the Cold War. Nothing could catch it. Nothing could beat it except for money and time. And if you really want to learn more about these, I do have an earlier video you can watch. Sadly, the SR-71 would be the last major project Johnson would develop for Lockheed, and he would officially retire from Lockheed in 75, but remain a consultant for the next several years. But his influence would go on to affect other aircraft developed by Lockheed later on, like the F-117. Sadly, he did pass away in December of 1990, but his legacy and influence are still felt in any aircraft developed by Lockheed, now Lockheed Martin, to this day. 
So there you have it, a quick look at Kelly Johnson and the aircraft he helped influence and develop. And I don't think there's a single one of these aircraft that didn't have a lasting impact on the world around us. So that's it for today. I thank you for joining me for Obscure History, and I look forward to talking to you all the next time.